I'm speaking in place of John tonight, so the visitors, please come back and listen to him. I got this. Now, Holy Spirit has this. He has this. Yes. So why am I here, right here, right now? Because I gave my yes. Don't let that scare you. Don't let it scare you. Um, it's my yes. It's my walk. Everybody's walk is unique, right? Your yes is going to be a different walk. Your yes is going to be a different walk. But praise God, my yes has had to overcome my greatest fear, and that was public speaking. Yes. Yes. And God has walked me through that in the last four years. And you know what? Believe it or not, this is the first time that I've done a longer message. We've done a few 10-minute messages. And praise God, there is no fear. None whatsoever. Thank you, Lord. So he knows, I mean, the enemy is over, uh, is defeated by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony, right? So this is me giving our, to my testimony. He's taking it and turning it for good for his kingdom, however that plays out. However that plays out, I say yes. So tonight, playing into that, a few weeks ago when John asked me, no, 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 let's just say it how it is, how when he told me I was speaking tonight, <laughs> love you, John, we love you, um, I asked the Lord, I said, what do you want me to bring? What do you want me to teach on? And you know, for a few days I didn't hear, and it's like, it's okay. I just released it. I knew he would show me when it was time. And one day he says to me, stop putting me on the back burner. And it was a directive. I thought to me it was so sharp. Stop putting me on the back burner. And I'm like, what? How am I doing that? What? He said, no, tell my people, stop putting me on the back burner. So tonight, that's the slide John made for us. I love it. I love it. So tonight, we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Yes. Now let's stand. Let's pray real quick into this message because we want Holy Spirit to come and wreck us tonight. So God, God, you are everything. Holy Spirit, say to us what you want to say tonight. Help me to stay out of the way. Flow through me as you choose to do. God, this is your platform, your podium. Do all that you want, no matter what it looks like. Hijack this if you want. Let these words be rhema. Let them be from your heart, God. Give us ears to hear what you are saying. Give us hearts that say yes. Even before you say it, we say yes, Lord. We surrender to you, to your word. I say, God, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done right here, right now in Revival X, as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. Whew, thank you, Lord. Well, let's jump right in. That was just the intro. So, Exodus 20, 2 and 3. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. So, stop putting God on the back burner. What happens when you put a pan of water on the back burner and forget about it? It boils dry. It gets scorched, right? Well, that's what happens when we put God on the back burner. That happens to us. When he's put on the back burner, he's forgotten. Day to day, what happens? We get distracted. We get busy with life, with schedules, with family, kids, hanging out with friends, work, school. We get busy doing, doing, doing. We are doing like Marthas. We are becoming Marthas when we're doing, doing, doing. But what should we be doing? We are forgetting to be like Mary and sit at the feet of Jesus. We get boiled dry. We get disconnected in our relationship with God. We become lackadaisical. Lackadaisical, that's a fun word. Lacking enthusiasm. Carelessly lazy. We're lazy with our prayer life. We pray once in a while or when we decide we need him. Right? Hello? Mm. We stop looking here for answers, and we start looking here for answers. Or we look here for answers, inward, and we become what we think is self-sufficient or people-sufficient. We forget that it's God that has the answers. What happens when your kid has a, a headache? You go grab the Tylenol before even checking in with God. Right? Where our first reaction should be, God, I speak healing over this child in Jesus' name. 
So God gets moved to the back burner where he is waiting for us to remember him, his love, his power, his word. We tell ourselves we'll get around to him eventually. Hmm. Meanwhile, we are fixing our eyes and hearts on other things, not on things above. And then we are surprised when we enter a desert season. What? Colossians 3, 2. And I'll read it in the Amplified C. And set your minds and keep them set on what, uh, what is eb- above, the higher things, not on the things that are on the earth. And Psalm 141, 8, please. But my eyes are toward you, O God, my Lord. In you I seek refuge. Leave me not defenseless. So I looked up back burner meaning on the, on the internet just for kicks. And it was interesting, some of the things, some of the points, I'm going to share them, but I want you to really take it as if it pertains to God, because that's what we're talking tonight. God on the back burner. So, back burner meaning something deliberately, something or someone deliberately put aside so more important or urgent things can be taken care of. To put aside for the time being as a subject that is not of immediate concern, but that may be activated later. Someone in a position of low priority. When one person in a partnership keeps another person in their life as a potential backup or reserve option. How about this one? A person to whom one is not presently committed and with whom one maintains some degree of communication in order to keep or establish the possibility of future intimate involvement. And last one. Back burner is the one always forgotten about. We can learn what to do and what not to do from stories in the Bible. We're not going to turn there, but 1 Kings 3, 5 through 13 shares the story of Solomon, the newly appointed king. God appears to him in, in a dream and says, ask for whatever you want me to give you. Solomon asked for wisdom and the Lord was pleased. He had not asked for life. He had not asked for wealth. He had not asked for the destruction of his enemies. So the Lord gave him more wisdom than anyone on earth. Solomon became renowned for his insight. He built a temple for the Lord. When he had finished building the temple, the the Lord came back in 1 Kings 9 and said, or he reminded Solomon to walk in his ways and not to serve other gods. So two chapters later, we know the story. He had 700 wives and 300 concubines. And they had led him astray and turned his heart to other gods. Solomon's heart was no longer fully devoted to God. Solomon had put God on the back burner. So we would be naive to think if King Solomon, the wisest man on earth, if it could happen to him, we would be naive to think that it couldn't happen to us. And Solomon had a heart for God, fully devoted to God. We have to fix our eyes on the Lord. That is the only, only, only way we will be wise. Another thing, when we put God in the back burner and we forget about him, what happens? We leave the door wide open for the enemy. An open invitation. Come in. Wreak havoc. havoc. Do what you want with my life. We are inviting him when God's on the back burner. We get scorched. He attacks, we are left reeling. We aren't equipped to fight back because we are out of sync with Holy Spirit. So often, what do we do when we're not walking with God, when we're attacked by the enemy? We hunker down and hope for a short season. We hope to get out of the desert quickly. And then we start crying out to God. God, help me. God, why don't you help me? God, give me strength. Why aren't you moving? I can't feel your presence. I can't hear you. God, help me. And this is right where the enemy wants us. Not fighting. Victims. Defenseless. (laughs) But guess what? Come on now. We were not created to be victims at all. We are above and not beneath. We are the head and not the tail. We were created to rule and reign with Christ Jesus. 
God is raising up an army and we are the ones he is equipping to fight. We were created to be warriors. We have to fight. We have to go on the offensive. Yes, defensive is good. Defense is good, but we have to go on the offense. Defense cannot stand alone. And the only way to do that is to keep God on the front burner. So how do we do that? Good question. The truth is we all make time for things that are important to us, that we consider important, for things that matter to us. We make time for it. So we have to keep God a priority. We have to keep him first and foremost, foremost front burner. We, <clears throat> excuse me, we all want to know his plans for our lives, but how can we know these things if we don't spend time with him in prayer or his word? So Matthew twenty-two thirty-seven, please. Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. Here, Jesus is calling us to give everything we have, our heart, our soul, our mind, fully devoted to him, putting him first, making him the absolute utmost priority in our lives, loving him fully, completely, with all that we are. We have to live all in for him. We have to live on fire for him. We have to live surrendered, everything on the altar, dying daily. We have to live repentant, immediately seeking forgiveness for any misstep, no matter how big or small. We have to walk in the fear of the Lord, in the reverence of the Lord. And we have to be quick to obey. He wants our immediate yes, Absolutely no hesitation. So I touched on my yes story, but I'm going to go a little more in detail. Just story time. Um, In 2020, I had an encounter with God, and he says to me, do you want my best for you? Do you want my best for your kids? Do you want my best for your family? I'm like, well, yes. Then he said, give me your yes, always. It's like, whew, at the time that seemed easy, right away. I said, yes, Lord, yes. But what I didn't count on was walking through my biggest fear, what I shared with you earlier, public speaking. And so it was really, after I gave him my yes, after that encounter, it was about a week later, and a lady prophesied over me. And she said, you're going to be speaking to people. I'm like, okay. I'm thinking in my head. I'm not talking while she's talking. I like talking to people. A lot of people. I'm like, great, God. Clear my schedule. That sounds fun. At one time. I was like, ooh, breaks. And I was just like deer in the headlights looking at her while she's prophesying over me. And there's this conversation in my head. And God said, do I have your yes? I'm like, uh... I felt the weight of it, the fear just like trying to consume me. He said, do I have your yes? I'm like, um, are you telling me no? I'm like, no, 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 no. He said, do I have your yes? I'm like, ugh, yes, yes. And I gave him my yes. And that, at that point, whew, it has not been easy, but it has been so rewarding when the victories come, when he, st- when he shows up and shows off. And what we're working on is the hesitation getting less and less for me, my personal, the hesitation getting less and less. But it is a constant, that always yes that he's asking of me is a constant living surrendered. So let's pull up Proverbs 3, 6. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your paths straight. So when we acknowledge his authority and we surrender our plans to him, He promises to guide and direct our paths. Putting him first means seeking his guidance and following his lead in all our decisions, every endeavor. Psalms, or Psalm 16, 8, please. I keep my eyes always on the Lord. With him at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Praise God for that. This verse speaks of the steadfast focus and trust we should have in God. 
When our, our eyes are fixed on him, we are not swayed and shaken by the challenges of, challenges of life because there will be wildernesses, there will be deserts. But let's not bring them on by us not keeping him on the front burner. Because he does use deserts and wildernesses to grow us. But let's not do it from us not doing the right thing. Deuteronomy 4, 24. He wants to be first. For the Lord your God is a consuming fire, a jealous God. He deserves that first position. He wants our full devotion. Anything, that, anything less than living fully for God is hollow. So here are a few verses that show God on the back burner. Galatians 1.10. I'm going to do three girls. Am I now trying to win the approval of human beings or of God? Or am I trying to please people? If I were still trying to please people, I would not be a servant of Christ. So are we putting people before God? Is it more important what they think than what God thinks? Verse number two, Romans 8, 6, please. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. And Haggai 1, 6. You have sown much and harvested little. You eat, but you never have enough. You drink, but you never have your fill. You're, you clothe yourself, but no one is warm. And he who earns wages does so to put them in a bag with holes. These are all examples of God on the back burner. We're not putting him first. So here, here is where we need to be. James 4, 7 through 10. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be wretched and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning, your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will exalt you. So to clarify further, I'm going to read of where we're supposed to be. I'm going to read a couple of paragraphs from John's new book of Staying Saved. Here we go. We can only experience the deep things of God if we are fervent, radical, surrendered, and dying daily to the things of the flesh. There is no other way. There are no shortcuts, he goes on to say. At some churches and houses of prayer all around the world, people are praying two to four hours a day or more. They are allowing the groans of the Spirit to erupt out of them. They are devouring the Word of God as they allow the presence of God to permeate them in the prayer room. The Holy Spirit is speaking to them with clarity. The prophetic atmosphere around them is electric often like it is here, right? Dreams, visions, and a powerful anointing become regular, again, as it is here. It's, we're getting there. The chambers of their heart are opened to the searching of the Spirit of God. These people are undone, hungry, desperate, and relentless. Again, that's from his book, Staying Saved. So let's stand. Short and sweet. So many people claim to believe, but truly don't live in the spirit with every breath they take. The big question is, how can you serve the world and God? And the, the truth is, you can't. You can't. Reve Revelation 3, 19 and 20 says, those whom I love, I reprove and discipline. So be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and eat with him and he with me. Make him your first priority, your foremost priority. He is waiting for you. He is waiting for you to completely let go and let him move in and through you as he wills. He is waiting for you to let go of any and all control so he can bring heaven to earth through you. I encourage you, be a vessel. Let nothing stand in the way. Be free in him. So in a moment, I'm going to ask everyone to really find a place and just press in and seek God. Get with him alone. And I'm going to give you a couple of thoughts to be praying into here in a moment. And then when we're done with that, I'm going to ask, um, after you've had some time for yourself, I'm going to ask a three, two or three of our culture team to come up. So that if anyone needs further prayer to help further 
with any break off or getting through the steps of what I'm going to be saying here in a moment, then please, please, please don't hesitate to come up for prayer here in a little bit, right? But in just a moment, I want you to go and be by yourselves first with God. So here are a couple of the questions I want you to really be praying into. Thank you, Jesus. What have you allowed to take the place of God in your life? Are there idols you need to lay on the altar? And the second question, second idea, how much time do you spend sitting at the feet of Jesus? Really press in and seek God on these and just let's see what we need to do to get God back on the front burner. So please find a place and just get with God. Jesus, we love you because you first loved us, Lord. And I just pray that that love would propel us to reprioritize our lives if need be. And Lord, we want to put you in your rightful place in our lives. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us for putting things before you. Forgive us for idolatry. We repent of apathy, Lord. And we just say and declare that right now we put you in your rightful place. We make you number one in our lives. Lord, help us, help us to when we wake in the morning um, to pursue you, to think about you. Let us not let other things creep in and distract us, Lord, but let us return to our first love. So Lord, we say we, we will run after you we will discipline our flesh and we will run after you. We thank you, Lord, that you are faithful to meet us and that you love spending time with us and that you are after our hearts, Lord. And so we just say yes. We give you our yes. Lord, I just pray for everyone as they go that this would be something that you bring to their remembrance, that this message would come to their remembrance in the days to come. And as they may be tempted to be distracted, they would be motivated to push forward, to go deeper with you than ever before, to fall more in love with you than ever before. God, we just thank you. And we are believing for, for great and powerful things in the lives of each and every person here. Let them go in blessing and favor in Jesus' name. Amen.